Hello, welcome to the Donahue Group. It's 2008 and we could not be happier. We're here for a fast-paced half hour of conversation about state issues. Joining me, Cal Potter, former state senator. Uh, Tom Paneski, UW math professor who is channeling Lee Sherman Dreyfus for us today. Very nice. I don't nice. have a vest, but a sweater. There you go. Close enough. Uh, Ken Risto is wearing a Frank Lloyd Wright tie. And me, I'm just a simple country lawyer, Mary Lynn Donahue. Lots and lots of things to talk about at the state level, I think. Um, I want to start with a special session, actually. Um, started December 11th. One of the main pieces of it was alleged campaign finance reform. Doesn't seem to have gone very far, although there seems to be some interest in public funding, real public funding, for uh, Supreme Court justices with fairly high amounts. I, I think I read $400,000 per candidate. Um, what, Cal, what's the status of the session and what can you well, tell us? Well, the bills, when the session begins, it's nothing more than an introduction of the two bills that the governor wants the legislature to consider. And then it's up to the pace of the legislature to fulfill some disposition of those, and it can take weeks, many weeks. Um, what usually happens is the uh, bills go to committee, they have the public hearing, um, and they work their way just like any other bill through the process, and like I said, that could take weeks. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, of course, the, the speculation is that those who prevented any bill from coming up through the legislative process are those who are going to handle the same bill that the governor has given them. And so there are some prognosticators who are saying it's going to have a tough time, particularly in the assembly, of getting public financing passed that would cover all elections. But there is some hope for the Supreme Court and the court system because of the fact that uh, we've had a censor of one of the court sitting judges. And there is probably general agreement that a nonpartisan body such as the court um, is not only nonpartisan, but should be somewhat totally free, if you can, <laughs> of special interest before uh, things are litigated. And I think the court has come out very strongly, you know, members of the court, in favor of that, that they apparently have felt enough heat for having to go out and get big chunks of cash from private sources, and they would like to see a change as well. And I noticed there are a number of interest groups, um, um, Common Cause, ARP, I think, has come on board, a number of uh, very notable, respected organizations have said, at least legislature, uh, give public financing to the courts and let's get that problem solved and we'll see where we go with the other, um, the other bill. I suspect it'll pass in the, in the, in the Senate without a lot of trouble. Um, they'll up the limits, they'll up the, the contribution that people make on their income tax level uh, and put in strict spending limits or some type of spending limits, which you can do if there is public financing. And then it will go to the assembly and then you'll have a lot of pontificating about uh, whether tax dollars ought to be going to fund those dirty politicians and their campaigns, uh, trying to put a spin on of it that somehow they're not deserving of your tax dollars when in actuality, to me, the system is so corrupt and stinks so much now that uh, the only salvation is some type of public financing. But I don't think that's been internalized with the public. And so the assembly may de indeed uh, get their way and kill the bill. And of course, that will set the stage for Common Cause and others to try to resurrect the bill next yeah. session again. And if the governor is uh, willing, he'll try again. And sometimes it does take several special sessions and several introductions of a bill before something is ultimately passed. Yeah. What, what, you mentioned something very interesting. Uh, with public financing, you could set spending limits. Well, the Supreme Court has basically ruled that if public financing is not involved, there is no way that you can set spending limits for politicians because it's an abridgment of their freedom of expression. And so that's why we always come back to the spending limit uh, and public financing is melded into one. If the candidate chooses not to do public financing. Well, the, the unique thing about the bill right. that Doyle proposed. They can do it. They, they, can, then blow, they, can, they can blow right. They can, do it, they can raise as much money as, as they, they want. want. But Doyle's bill, if I remember correctly, <clears throat> provides that if the opposing candidate does not accept public financing, then the candidate that does take financing gets another, gets three times mm -hmm. the amount Correct. of money that he or she would normally get. So 
and that to me was a brilliant way to structure the to structure the right. carrot and stick kind of thing, right. because um, public financing levels, if they're not, I mean, typically they're so low that unless you're a terrible candidate, you're not. I mean, you'd be foolish to accept public financing. So this is putting real money uh, in the pockets of people who take public financing and also making it a little harder for candidates who decide not to. The word is that, and I think we mentioned this in another show, that Annette Ziegler spent of her own money, it will take her eight out of her 10 years on the Supreme Court to reimburse herself for the money she spent getting elected. Well, I was gonna ask, how, about how much was that? Do you recall what the, the well, either, either candidate it, what the, was spent? It was well over $2 million. $2 million, okay. Um, I think the combined amounts, right. and I mean it was obscene. It was obscene, mm -hmm. and the Butler, um, and I forget the judge. I'm sorry from Burnett County, Gamble Gableman, who's running against Lewis Butler for Supreme Court, uh, Burnett County judge, uh, and there are only the two of them. Um, that will be a hugely expensive election because the the, the Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce is has really targeted Butler to, to get rid of him. And so again, it's, you Then know. you can be assured that WEAC will be, my teacher's union will be right there. Mm -hmm. If Butler wishes to have that sort of support, that will be the interesting question. He yeah. may be put in a position where he really doesn't have any option. Without public financing, Without any public financing. he has to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And That's what you're gonna be looking at large amounts system. of money. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting to, to see how that all plays out. And then how, does adjust, then how does Justice Butler, for example, let's play that scenario out. Let's say he's put in a position where he needs to raise funds and, and WEAC comes along with their bag of money like they do, and he accepts it. How does he rule on uh, the charter school case that we talked about in the last episode? Well, that's the issue is that you, <laughs> have, issue. That's you, right. have, yeah. ju you have judges who need to recuse themselves. Um, and uh, <laughs> there was a recent very important case that was a 3-3 vote that had been certified from the Court of Appeals to the Supreme Court. In other words, the Court of Appeals saying, we can't deal with this, this is so important, Supreme Court, you do it. Well, it was a 3-3 vote because one of the judges had to recuse himself because he had taken substantial financial contributions from one of the parties that was involved. And so this brings us to Justice Ziegler um, in what must be one of the more protracted, embarrassing positions for a, a Supreme Court justice or any judge to be uh, involved in. Um, the three panel judge, three judge panel that was set up by the Supreme Court to recommend any disposition on, on, on the, the, the ethical violations that, that Justice Sigler admitted to has come up with a, re a reprimand which uh, in, the, in the big scheme of things is, is, is not so important. The Wisconsin Democracy Campaign points out that lawyers get suspended from the practice of law for months at a time or are required to pay fines or whatever. Um, for the same, it should be pointed out, for the same conditions. I mean, they, or for, for substantially the three-judge panel rec, you yeah. know, acknowledged that she didn't financial, financially benefit, but lawyers who unwittingly or unknowingly and did not. I mean, mm -hmm. she, she, may have, she was somewhat aware at least the record mm -hmm. is that she was aware of this sort of conflict, didn't think it affected her, so she moved on. Mm -hmm. Lawyers who unwittingly made a mistake got a mm -hmm. higher punishment. We should point out, too, this is a recommendation. To the Supreme to Court. To the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court, the other remaining six justices are going to have to decide whether they accept that recommendation. Now, I don't know this, this part of the process. Could they up the... Could they up the, uh, the, the punishment? Absolutely. Because what she got was the bare bones right. minimum. In fact, mm. she... Pro she and her lawyer proposed this punishment. Right, right. Yeah, no, um, I mean, she could be suspended for any amount of time. Okay. Um, so so it's, it's interesting to see how that plays out. But this must be an agony for her uh, oh, yeah. because this has been going on and on. I mean, it's a year now. Yeah. And uh, that was a terrible, bloody, awful yeah. race. Oh, and the butler, Gableman, I'm pretty sure the judge's name is Gableman, Watch, I'll have a Supreme Court case. <laughs> Someone will tell him about this taping. <laughs> she didn't remember my name. Um, but I think... Um, That's a November election, isn't it? No, it's no. April. It's oh, this is in April. Right, this oh, a man, non, this is right. a nonpartisan non okay. race. And uh, so those are always in April. And so it will, it will be interesting to see how to see how that all plays so out. So pretty soon, yeah. Yeah. The we'll ads be hearing have not, ads. I, I haven't have, heard any ads. No, I think it's a little... 
I think it's a little early, but my memory is that you can run, and you probably know this much better than I, the world's best campaign, but that final month is when the wheels come off the car, and no matter how well you've planned, something goes wrong, or you're going so fast, and you're in so many different places, you have so many people working for you, or these negative ads come up, and at the last minute, you're in a defensive posture. So it, it'll be interesting to see mm -hmm. how, how those ads play out. And um, I don't know what this judge is like. And I think the timing is good, having this bill before the legislature at a time when oh, you're going to have a court mm -hmm. uh, race that's going to be very expensive, and you have a censure of, a, of one of the judges. And they have basically a come out and said, we support this bill. So mm -hmm. I think they're looking for sort of help us out of this mess that we've created. And I think it's just a good opportunity for the legislature to right. do good for society as well as help the judiciary right. out of their mess. Right. So it'll be interesting to see. Let's I, I just go, don't, yeah, I just don't see how we can continue to look the public in the eye and say, we want judges, at least in theory, to approach cases with an open mind and give the, at least the appearance of being objective and impartial in interpreting the law and allow and, and put them in a situation where they have to raise that kind of money. Because to raise that kind of money, they, they're going to end up going to business interests and unions and other large institutions, which they have to rule on regularly. Sure. Well, of course, they and, don't do that themselves. No, they right? don't. The, I mean, that's strictly prohibited, but... But it, again, they it just have people raises do it for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. all sorts of, and then how long does that, I mean, how long do you recuse yourself from cases? The year mm -hmm. after the election? Two mm -hmm. years after the election? Three years after the election? You'll, you'll get to the point where the court will be in a very difficult situation in deciding any important, really a very, mm -hmm. very important cases. Mm -hmm. It's always nice to have a Supreme Court that's chock full of they differ or there are different political persuasions, but it can't be the best justice that money can buy. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid that's kind of kind of what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about a little bit more innocent time and more in the passing of Lee Sherman Dreyfus, certainly one of the more colorful and interesting political figures. Cal, you were in the Senate with uh, with uh, Governor Dreyfus and Well, I remember him uh, I was in the assembly when Marty Schreiber was acting governor cuz uh, Pat Lucy had been appointed uh, the ambassador to Mexico by Jimmy Carter. And uh, we had a surplus in the state in 1978. Oh, yes, I remember. I remember and that. Lee Dreyfus that. went around That's the right. state with his red vest and his red bus yep. and the band on top of the bus. <laughs> and probably our friend Mr. Paneski was probably in the bus with him at times. <laughs> and uh, no, I didn't get in the bus. Beating up merc <laughs> unmercifully uh, Marty Schreiber for having this money that was created by a hotly, a hot economy with rapid inflation. That's what basically brought it about is people's salaries went up and prices went up. The state generated a lot more revenue because of sales tax and income tax and so on. So unbeknownst mm -hmm. to Mar Marty Schreiber, it wasn't because he was raising taxes, it was just it was coming in at a very rapid rate and he had a surplus and somehow Lee Dreyfus through the golden tongue that he had was able to spin that Marty Schreiber just wasn't running the ship right. Uh, interesting enough is that we went from extreme inflation to a depression, later almost a recession. And near the end of uh, Dreyfus's term, he chose not to run again. Uh, then we had uh, Tony Earle come in, and Tony Earle was saddled with a multi-million, hundred million dollar uh, deficit mm -hmm. due to the fact that we went in a recession. He had to raise taxes, became Tony the Taxer, and uh, then we found our isn't friend it, yeah, Tommy Thompson won on that issue. I know, isn't that well, So well, economic well, conditions well. really do saddle a candidate or reward a candidate with rhetoric or situations that can bode well or not so well for them. And Lee Dreyfus just wrote a, a very high, good situation on, on wanting to return the money to the people. When was he gov when was he governor? I don't remember the year. 78, well, uh, 78. Uh, to January of 83, 82, but 82. 82. Yeah. 78, so 78 82. 78 to 82, yeah. well, right. uh, that's the time when the nation was going through high inflation. It right. wasn't just right. the state of Wisconsin. Well, no, but <laughs> the issue that <laughs> Lee that every, every state finessed was, in. was yeah. the fact that we had a surplus. <laughs> And that right. somehow the, the sitting governor stole that money from the people and should return it. And you know, never want to have a savings account, huh? No. Yeah, and this was yeah. A, yeah, and this was a time prior to the tax brackets being indexed. Yes. And that happens later on under President Reagan. So you're absolutely right, Cal. As people got salary increases just automatically to keep adjust, you know, keep pace with inflation, 
the state coffers were, were filling up. I was reading that it was almost a billion dollar surplus. I mean, mm -hmm. Dreyfus gave away, uh, well, actually the number I'm reading here is $942 billion. Yeah. Million. It was like million. 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 excuse me, 942, yeah, almost a billion. billion. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. that's when a billion was almost a billion. That was real folding money at that point. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah, then, and, and then, yeah, giving it all back, you know, made a lot of, was very politically popular. And I forgot the, the solution. It wasn't a tax rebate. It was just simply not taking money off of people's checks. It was a holiday, I think. Yeah, about a withholding month or holiday. of that nature, yeah. Yeah. And of course, the legislature was going to go along with it. Here's the guy that ran eloquent campaign against the surplus, and the legislature just rolled over and gave the money back. And like I said, in four years, we were in a deficit. <laughs> Uh, he came through Sheboygan and uh, campaigned at the campus here, and uh, uh, we were also raising money for uh, cancer. We were doing a, can a basketball a thon for cancer. Jack Snyder, who was the coach, uh, regularly ha and uh, held a basketball a thon for cancer. But Dreyfus came through, spoke to the kids. Uh, I, I was participating in the basketball a thon and. Uh, I said, uh, would you sign my uh, sheet to, because I'm going to be playing this weekend, and uh, he signed it, and I played, got so many hours, copied the sheet, sent it to his office, and uh, he sent me a check for it. All right. the cancer. I thought right. that was great. And I also campaigned. Uh, I helped around the county. I was getting interested in politics at that time, and it was a lot but, of fun. But look how the Republican Party has changed. And I mean, that part of the you know pre-Reagan, give the money back to the people, is certainly part of the Republican platform even today. But when the, to somewhat of his credit, when the economy did go south and Wisconsin was looking at deficits, Dreyfus actually went along with. I'm sure he wasn't excited about a one percent increase in the sales tax to sort of help. But he was the first, you know, the governor that signed the anti-discrimination laws for gays. In this, in, in yeah, this, that was in probably state. the last of the what what I like to think of the fiscal uh, issue Republicans, because today it's sort of gay bashing and guns and abortion and a lot of other issues. And yeah. Lee Dreyfus was out there very honestly on the gay issue, and it wasn't the campaign issue with him. It was just the, he thought it was right, and he signed the bill. And he did it from a libertarian point of view. Mm -hmm. He said it's just simply government. It's not government's business to be asking people their sexual orientation. Yeah. And we became and the first it. in the country to yeah. have that law. Yeah, Wisconsin was the first. Yes. And he just before, you know, his death last year or two years ago, he was with other go former governors talking about we shouldn't be amending the state constitution to define what marriage may or may not be constitutionally. Yeah. And so it's consistent all the way through his career about certain areas of government activity ought not, you know, yeah. human activity, citizen activity isn't any business of government. Yeah. And, well, uh, he was an interesting man, and uh, we are mm -hmm. the richer for his uh, having been in office, and, uh, and Cal would say probably just for four years. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to move on, we have lots of other things to talk about. The passage of the new cable bill presents the Donahue Group and other users of public television with a wonderful opportunity. Governor Doyle, as I understand it, um, introduced or... Um, uh, one of the vetoes allows public, the, the cable bill was signed, all right, so no more local cable franchising. What we've been talking about over the years, or over the months, feels like years, um, was signed into law, but the, uh, uh, Governor Doyle is saying that public access stations, which after three years are not going to have any more money from cable franchises, can make that up by doing commercial uh, advertising and infomercials. So I think that we should have a challenge to our listeners um, and, and our viewers, 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 our viewers and listeners, to come up with ideas uh, for the ways that we can raise money for Channel 8 with commercial advertising. What products we might demonstrate on this what program. The product <laughs> demonstration, I would be... <laughs> a vegematic. <laughs> cooking show, yeah. I'm uh, sure that there are things. A little that, exercise equipment. I'm happy to wear any kind of corporate logos on the show. That, <laughs> um, maybe we can get uh, Acuity to uh, underwrite the Donahue group. Yeah, maybe yeah. we could have just. The Acuity group. The Acuity Sorry, group. Sorry, you're going to be Your name's going to be bummed. That's okay. That's all right. I can handle that. Yeah. We could start smoking cigarettes <laughs> and no, hold I, up our I'm pay. I'm drawing the line there. I'm sorry. Um, 
Like, AT&T we'll AT yeah, AT spent a whole lot of money to get this bill passed. Uh, Doyle at least made some amendments to the bill that made it a little bit more palatable, a little more consumer friendly. Um, but I do think um, there's still a requirement that uh, franchisees pay 5% of their revenues to local um, to local governments, so it, uh, but there's no provision for public access programming as I understand it. So it, um, one of the best laws that money can buy, I think, is, is really one of the ways that we can take a look at that. So any comments on that or? Well, I would hope that there would be a trailer bill. Trailer bills are oftentimes, when, when there's a bill that's so well financed and so greased that the thing's gonna go through the system and be signed without amendment because all the proponents have just lined up the ducks so well that uh, the only hope to do something that of remediation or improvement is another bill, and that's the trailer bill that comes right behind it in the next session. And in this case, I would hope that someone in the legislature who is opposed to the bill or tried to amend a bill will come in and uh, try to do something for financing of these public access channels, because I think you know, while the Donahue Group is, is a great show, um, I think it's, it, it's uh, very, very important that school boards and county boards and yep. city councils be on the, on the tube, that people see who their elected representatives are, how they operate, what the issues are, because you know as well as I do, they're not gonna get off their duff and go down and sit in the council chambers or the county board place. The only exposure they have really, in many cases, is what they see on public access yeah. television. And I'm hopeful that uh, somebody will, and the governor did in signing the bill in, at the time of partial vetoes, did say he hoped that there would be something worked out uh, besides the selling of advertising to keep these channels online. And I, I think there's gotta be some way. And I would hope that the at and of the world would also see that there's a benefit to their communities that they're going to be serving as a private corporation mm -hmm. to have the school board or the city mm -hmm. council or the county board on that tube for, for the benefit of everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, as part of public access, don't other, I mean, it, informational kinds of activities. Uh, I've, I've seen uh, the superintendent on, on, on Channel 8. I've seen uh, uh, health care uh, providers on Channel 8. I've seen... Uh, county board... Uh, uh, other people okay. and agencies appear, or probably even the chamber. You know, everybody. That's part of public access, isn't it? Sure, it mm -hmm. sure is. Yeah, yeah. Folks, so. anybody can have a TV show here, as I've always pointed out. <laughs> so the well, obviously, all agree, yeah. I agree with <laughs> all the uh, you know the council and the county board and all those, but there's just the general other other agencies sure. and uh, well, we'll keep and, our community. And is there going to be sufficient? Who's going? You know, what's interesting about it? You can say, well, let's have advertising and private support, but who is it that's going to go out there and shake the bushes yeah. for that? I mean, are you going to start saying there are going to be county employees that go out and try to shake down businesses to get money to put the county board on the on, on the tube? You know, it starts yeah. to get to a point where you know, that's not the logistical thing to do. That it ought to be some type of uh, the people who send it over the wires ought to be access. You know, that it's gone to so. Something people say even that television stations and radio stations ought to give politicians, you know, half an oh, hour free an time hour. or something, because that's the best way to expose them to the people, and they shouldn't have to. Candidates shouldn't have to go out there, or in this case, the people who are in community access go out and raise money. It's oh, it's just, it's ludicrous. Yes, I, I mean one of the reasons people watch Channel Eight or Channel Twenty is there aren't <coughs> any commercials, no, no. <laughs> you know, and it, 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 you don't have to sit through a whole lot of silly selling to, to listen to things that are important to you. Well, we'll keep our viewers posted, and listeners, I should say, on, um, on that. Uh, but uh, truly one of the better bills uh, that money could buy. I am delighted to report that um, Accenture, the Accenture contract that we have talked about over the past years, because it's been going on so long, this is the, um, that contract has been canceled finally by the State Elections Board just before it turns into the Government Accountability Board. Uh, this was a software contract to meet the uh, Help America Vote Act requirements after 2001. I think bill passed in 2002. Mm -hmm. The state has spent millions of dollars mm -hmm. to get a voter registration list that's supposed to interface and be user-friendly and 
find terrorists, I don't know, what else, you know, Oreo cookies between the mattresses, I don't know. But um, it has been a joke. And the state elections board, I think, has been stubborn about not canceling this contract. And so finally, the contract will be canceled. Accenture has agreed to give some of the money back. Half. It's half of the money. Yeah. But we've still paid out millions and millions of mm -hmm. dollars. They also have the source code. And I'm not a computer person, so I don't understand. Accenture has agreed to turn over the source code, which apparently will be of great assistance to whomever the contract is turned over to. Uh, in terms of actually trying to produce the list. I think we're one of one of eight states in the United States that does not have, has not met the requirements of, of HAVA. And um, now the, 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 the elections board is saying that it still won't be in place for the April election, mm -hmm. but they're going into September and, and November. So, so I think that's, I think that's very interesting, but Boy, well, I think by took. statute we have to be we have to drop dead be ready to go by the presidential election in November. Well, I think there were several right. drop dead dates. Previously. Right. I mean, I know they're yeah. giving the, the the national government who's provided some of the funding for this um, has been giving some extensions, recognizing that this is complicated business. But yeah, I mean, Wisconsin will be one of the few states that doesn't have a reliable system up and going. Uh, perhaps, hopefully not, but perhaps by the presidential elections. Yeah. But I think um, the company gets to keep more than $7 million, uh, and maybe they've provided some, uh, uh, some quality or some value to the state after all these months or years. You would years, hope so for $7 million. Bucks. Isn't that be a amazing? Database yeah. that's at least isn't that amazing? Pretty well done. Yeah. I don't know. I just, um, I'm online uh, with the Wisconsin Democracy Campaign. Nonpartisan, attacks everybody kind of group, but I think does a fine job along with Common Cause of pointing out some really stupid things that happen. And I think that the elections board hanging on to this Accenture contract was not that sensible. Is this like, uh, I mean, I've been reading about other states where they've been computerizing their roles and cleaning their roles and everything right. else. And cities and states and, and some of the reports I've read in other communities saying that's been very helpful. We, you know, we find 10,000 people that are, who have passed away, and now we can at least take them off the rolls. We find X number of people who have moved. We don't need to include them anymore. Uh, so it's and I mean, right, feel or wrongly, they find felons on the lists. I they mean, find some of them felons, are felons on the list. I mean, there's a discussion in this country about, given the way we've been sentencing the sentencing guidelines, how many people we've disenfranchised. That's an issue, maybe for another show. But right. and so this yeah. group has been working with the state elections board for how long? Long time. Long time. Well, prior to Governor Doyle. Prior yes. to Governor oh, yeah. Doyle. Oh, so yeah. that's more than. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's what six years. That's like ago. the plumber who just can't quite get the bathtub in your house, oh. and you just keep giving them, you know, time after time, time opportunity, after time. and pay them millions of dollars to do that. We have just no time left at all. Next time we'll talk about Scott Jensen and where is he going to be tried. I think it's an interesting issue. Thanks for listening. We're glad to have you with us.